Hello, my wonderful friends, and it's time for a story, a continuation of a story. Part three, actually, from our wonderful Reddit friend, Awkward Bohem. This is Living with Two Neckbeards and a Legbeard, part three. So I was trying to think of some more stories about Mike, Declan, and Janice that aren't as creepy, and I was genuinely having a tough time thinking of one. That is until I turned to Carrie for help and was met with, Tell them about rent! Tell them about rent! And here we are. What about rent? We've been living with these three from hell for about a year at this point. As I said in my first post, Carrie and I are theater kids. We're part of the local drama group. Now, the way this group worked is that there'd be a group of peeps who'd be the main cast, and then there'd be the understudies, who also played minor side characters. It'd be like this for one show, and then we'd switch, and the understudies would get a chance to shine. It was a pretty good system. Anyway, as it happened, Carrie and I had been understudies for our last play, Hairspray. That's a really good one. So we've been cast as main characters for the next musical, Rent. Carrie had been cast as Joanne, and I'd been cast as Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Nothing really of note happened over the rehearsal period with the Beard Trio, except for when they asked us about the play. Mike had heard from a mutual friend about the production and began pester us about it, asking about who we were playing, what the show was about, when tickets for the show would be available, etc., etc. We tried to be as vague as possible, but wound up giving in and telling them a little about the characters we'd be playing, but tried not to give them too much information. I'm going to be real with you people. We really did not want them to come to the show. Understandable. Mike and Janice had come to see Hairspray, and despite us playing minor characters, they found any excuse to tell us how great our performance has been. I'm all for supporting your friends, but there's being supportive and being, well, weird. They'd say things like, weren't you guys just the cutest little things? As if they were talking to a couple of kids. Or, that dress was so pretty, you look just like a Princess Tutu. For context, I believe Princess Tutu is an anime character, one that Mike had admitted to crushing on. FBI should be knocking this door any minute now. Basically, all of their comments were either about how we looked, or how cute things we did were. Anywho, since Lady Luck was clearly not on our side, and we were too awkward to tell them no, Mike, Janice, and Declan decided they were coming to see the show. They rented the movie adaptation on Amazon and appeared very excited to see the show, thanks to the more suggestive nature of some of the songs, which they later backtracked on and deemed to be too inappropriate. Great. Fast forward to the night of the show. The Beard Clan made their way to their seats, bombarding everyone with the vile stench of B.O. as they went. The lights dimmed and our director went on stage to introduce the performance. Overall, the show went pretty great. The only issue we had during the performance was with Declan Wolf whistling at Alice, the girl playing Mimi. He actually tried to come on to her when we met up after the show. She politely shut him down and informed him that she had to hurry to catch a bus if she'd be home in time to have dinner with her boyfriend. Declan had tried to win her over by telling her that a real boyfriend would be here to pick up his girl and drive her home instead of making her go home with all the creeps out there. You mean like the creeps that are currently hitting on her? Yeah. Alice informed him that her boyfriend can't drive in hopes that he'd just piss off. This is also the point where Carrie and I tried to intervene and get him to stop talking, but of course he didn't. He went on to call Alice's boyfriend lazy and unmotivated for not wanting to learn how to drive. Well, aren't you just an asshole? And that he didn't understand why she wanted to date someone that can't be bothered to learn such an essential skill. We tried to stop him. We really did. But he would not listen. Alice's boyfriend is severely visually impaired. <sighs> oh! Open mouth, insert foot, eh, Declan? I mean, not that there's anything wrong with never learning to drive. I haven't, and Declan hadn't either at this point. Just really choking on that shoe leather, aren't you, buddy? But god, man, it hurts to just think about. He'd essentially spent about five minutes berating a blind man for not learning how to drive. He just sort of paused, not sure of what to say next. Must have dawned on him that he was acting like a complete ball bag. I don't know what that means, but I like it. Because he just muttered a 
Sorry, I didn't say anything else. Carrie and myself were also not free from beard drama surrounding the performance. See, Mike and Janice still had not gotten the idea of a threesome, foursome, polyamory thing out of their head. You know those really possessive partners that don't want their partner talking to anyone but them? Yeah, I know all about people like that. The ones that make you want to smack them in the teeth? Oh yeah. That's the way Mike and Janice acted with myself and Carrie. Except, you know, we're not dating. And Mike didn't have any teeth left to smack. <laughs> you just snatched his soul out through his kneecaps. That was beautiful. They didn't mind us being close to each other, but God forbid we like being around other people. When we got home from the show, Janice immediately started fussing over Carrie, asking her if she was okay. Apparently she was convinced that Sasha, the girl playing Maureen, Carrie's girlfriend in the play, had been harassing Carrie for the entire show by, wait for it, acting like her girlfriend. Oh, it's almost as if they were in a fucking play. Wow, that'd be amazing. There was hand-holding, kissing, hugging, and it was... It was carnage and completely out of line. I mean, it's not like the script requires the actors playing couples to act like real couples. How absurd. Maureen's character is extremely suggestive. I saw it in the movie. So I didn't understand why Janice was so surprised that Sasha had acted the way she did. It was in the script. I managed to sneak a glance at the group and the audience during... Take Me or Leave Me, Carrie and Sasha's duet, and Janice just sat there, face like fizz as she watched them perform. Janice appeared to get more pissed off when Carrie did that kind of stuff with girls, though, even bringing up the fact that she wished Carrie would have played Angel, a trans-slash-drag queen character. Her gender identity seems to vary with different shows. So she wouldn't have been dancing around with that trap. It also apparently made sense for Carrie to play a trans character with her being trans and all. Just gonna go ahead and put that out there, are you? That's just the way you're gonna handle things, eh, leg beardo? Dude, fuck off. Because God forbid she'd be able to play anyone else. Yeah, I know, right? It's almost like she's an actress and can act as anyone. Oh my God, that would be crazy. I wasn't able to escape their jealousy either. See, there's a song in the show, La Vie et Bohème, where I got my username. Really? Where the characters sing about a bunch of stuff, including sex, S&M, and masturbation, which is always fun. During the line, to sodomy, it's between God and me, to S&M, myself and a friend, James, had decided to be funny for me to put a hand on top of his head and push, quote-unquote, him to his knees. You folks will know what we're miming. And then pretend to slap him when we got to the S&M line. Sounds pretty funny. Not exactly family-friendly, but it fit with the song, the director, and audience found it funny, and most importantly, it was just a bit of fun. As you probably already guessed, the Beards did not like this. You know, it's amazing that two human beings could be such wet blankets. They believed that those sorts of things were far too inappropriate for me to be performing. Quick reminder, I was 20 at the time. Oh yes, those horribly innocent 20-year-olds. How dare they get exposed to the sexual nature. They are but children. Seriously, fuck off, Beardo. Mike told me that he thought it was cute that I'd chosen to do something so quirky, but that I didn't want to give people the wrong idea. Fuck off, dude. People might get the idea that I was interested in doing those sorts of things with men. Okay, one, I'm a 20-year-old gay kid. Of course I'm fucking interested in that. And two, who the hell did he think he was? Telling me what I should be interested in. And three, it's a friggin' joke in a show. James is an absolute sweetheart, but I don't like him like that, and he was also very happy with his fiance, now wife. The clan didn't come to any of our productions after this, as Mike and Janice did want to see us in such a sexual scenario. Mm-hmm. They said it as if it was something that was going to upset us. Uh, no. Bye, bitch. You three won't be missed. <laughs> so that's the Rent story. Not really all that exciting, but living with beards never really is. It's more just awkward and creepy. Also, I just remembered I mentioned the incident with Declan trying to save a lady in Burger King in my previous post. So I'll add this here. Oh boy, here we go. Basically, the five of us had decided to go out to do some shopping and grab a bit of lunch. Or, well, Carrie and I had planned to, and the other three invited themselves along. Classy. Mike and Janice gave us their order and then grabbed a seat. I just realized that they didn't give us money for that, though. There's 20 quid I won't be getting back. 
Ouch. Declan had opted to come up to the counter to order with us, as he didn't trust us to get his order right. Because as we all know, remembering Burger King orders is just so difficult. Oh yes, it's the highest in fine dining. You have to make sure you get it right. Anywho, we paid for our order, and there we were waiting for our food, and we noticed Declan staring at a couple near us. They were maybe in their mid-twenties and joking around with each other. The guy had stolen a chip from the girl, and she had jokingly slapped his arm, calling him an asshole in the loving way that couples do. Declan apparently didn't like this and decided he had to speak up. Oh god, here we go. Something along the lines of how it was disgusting how some guys would gladly see their girlfriend starve and think it was funny. He stole a chip. Clearly his partner was fine with it. He didn't have to get involved. You know the situation with Alice? This is basically that, but with someone we didn't even know. Oh god. So if they decided to kick the shit out of Declan for being a creep, there wasn't really much we could do. Not that we really wanted to anyway. We tried to distract him, but he wasn't having it. The couple had heard him talking as they looked around, but hadn't registered that Declan was talking about them. Because, you know, the guy had stolen a chip. He wasn't exactly starving her. So Declan decided to take it one step further. He went over to them, tapped the girl on the shoulder, and asked her if she'd like some of his chips because clearly the seagull beside her doesn't want her to eat. The guy stole a chip. One single chip. Declan, why are you like this? My question exactly. Needless to say, the girl shut him down pretty quick with a simple Fuck off! <laughs> I'd have paid money to see that. He tried again, telling her that he was just looking out for her. This was probably their first or second date, right? If he was going to act like this so early into the relationship, then God knows what he'd be like down the line. Declan was just trying to spur her the hassle. The guy then spoke up and told him that he and his wife are very happy together, and he needed to back the fuck off. Declan just didn't know when to shut up, so he made a comment that I think was supposed to be a bit of a threat about how he went to the gym a lot. I won't lie, Declan did go to the gym, and he's in pretty good shape, even with his less than healthy diet. But this guy he was threatening was built like a brick shit house and would have easily punched him in the next week. The interaction would have continued, and maybe led to a full on fight, had the woman not spoken up. She'd gone for the simple yet classic Away in while you hate, you're interfering, we thought. <laughs> With that, Declan went in a huff, turning back to wait for his food. He glared at the couple as we headed back to our table and continued to glare as they left the building. Carrie and I also received a couple of glares for laughing, because we were supposed to feel sorry for him. Sorry, sweetheart, you get no sympathy for acting like a creep. Anyway, this is getting really long. I'm going to stop here. I'll probably be posting a good few of these tales. I'm not going to do anything else at the minute until my ankle's better anyway. Goodbye, everybody. Well, I hope your ankle heals very quickly, and I'm enjoying all of these stories. I don't know about anybody else, but I think this is fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for sharing them. Just, there's so much, isn't there, kids? There's so much. This, Declan is like the neckbeard you hear stories about all the time. Just that, I have to save the ladies. Just that fucker. Like, oh my god, dude, shut up. And then fucking Mike and Janice, just, dear God, why, why? You are clearly not in a relationship with these two. They have no interest in being in a relationship with you. Stop being just the creepiest creeps ever and go do your own thing. Why must you be like this? That goes for all three of them, if I'm being completely honest. Mike, Janice, and Declan. Why are you like this? Stop. It's also good to know that it's not just an American thing. Apparently, they're everywhere. Which, on one hand, means that, yes, they are everywhere, so I guess we don't have to feel so bad about having that thing happen here in the States, or in just North America, but on the other hand, it means they're everywhere. Dear God, the infection has spread. And it's not even staying to one sexuality anymore. See, neckbeards used to just be straight, and now they're on to everyone. There's no stopping the virus, kids. It's time to live in bunkers and scan everyone's retinas, make sure they're not, you know, growing neck beards and planning on purchasing fedoras and preparing to say, m'lady, at any given time. 
Seriously, somebody should write a story about neckbeards becoming like zombies. I, I would read that. That sounds really funny. I should write that. I won't. I mean, I have too much work to do, so I probably won't. But it does sound really funny. <laughs> Either way, this is a great story, and uh, I hope you're all enjoying it. If you are, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Hey, that was a smooth segue. No, it wasn't. It really wasn't. That was terrible. I also have a Ko-Fi and a merch store. You can check those out. I'd appreciate it, because, you know, they support this channel, and that's important so that we can keep doing stuff like this. If you can't, that's okay, too. I have a subreddit, r slash moonhorse stories, where you can send your stories. That would be the point of the subreddit. I have no idea why I was lost there for a second, but there it is. Send stuff there, and sometimes I read it. Well, I mean I read it. Sometimes it gets made into videos. Ooh, fancy. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea why I'm doing the outro like this, but, you know, hey. There's Discord, too. The, the link, all those... And the drop down thing below this in every video you can check this out i have no idea what the hell i did to this outro it's bad it's bad but i love you all i'm really trying i'll see you in the next episode everybody goodbye goodbye i'm fading away